Okay, so this is my first sketchbook story time video. Um, I want to start off by apologizing for the framing of the video because it is crooked, but that's because I have my phone recording and it's mounted to a high chair. <laughs> um, it's kind of hard to manage right now, but I'll figure something else out in the future. Um, so, for my first story time, I'd like to talk about an old friend of mine, who we're just going to call Jay, and she stole some of my art. So, our friendship began with us just hanging out, and I used to take my sketchbook everywhere with me, so I would always take it over to her house and just be doodling in it or coloring something I'd drawn earlier while we watched YouTube videos and just chilled and listened to music and whatever. Um, eventually she wanted to look at my sketchbook and she really liked what she saw, which was flattering, um, but she wanted to learn how to draw herself. So I offered to teach her some things, just some basic anatomy guidelines and very basic color theory um, just to get her going. So I'd go over to her house with my sketchbook and my art supplies and I would show her how to do things with my stuff until eventually I thought I would buy her her own art supplies or maybe she would buy her own art supplies and shockingly that never happened. It was always on my dime and on my time and I was doing this for free just because we were friends and I really wanted an art friend. <clears throat> At the time I was going to college for art so I was learning new stuff and I would come home and tell her more or less some of what I'd learned. Um, and so that went on for a few months. She began to get really clingy though and demand more of my time than I was willing to give because I had a job and I had to do homework and I was dating someone at the time as well. So I didn't want to spend all of my time at her house, uh, though for about three months that's the way it went. I spent every day at her house with her and her boyfriend and ended up being the person who cleaned up after them and who went on errands for them and spent the night a few times and made meals for them and at first it was just like, oh, you're my friend. I want to do things for you. I want to be friendly and nice and helpful. And it's so great that I have somebody to hang out with. Um, also at the time, I really wanted dreadlocks, which is a very cringy thing to look back on. Do not judge me. Uh, she wanted dreadlocks as well. So we set up a deal where I would dread her hair and she would dread my hair. And I ended up dreading my own hair as well as her hair. So yeah, that's a side note. Um, anyway, back to the art. Um, we got so comfortable and close that I would just leave my stuff over at her house and I'd also done a couple free paintings for her, not just sketches and doodles, but actual paintings that I'd spent hours on in oil paint and um, <clears throat> she really liked them. Um, so I just leave my stuff over at her house and during our friendship I took a trip to Uganda with my dad. We went on a mission trip that was about two weeks long. I really loved the trip and I brought this journal with me where I documented certain things like I had pressed some flowers, I had taped in some labels from some like soda bottles and candy bars and just things that were in like Swahili instead of English which I thought was really cool. I wrote letters to God, I drew pictures of the orphans that I was volunteering with and it was just a great trip and so I brought this journal back and showed it to her and she read through it and freaking loved it I guess. Um, eventually though, after she was really clingy I was getting more uncomfortable being around her and my boyfriend at the time mentioned it to me and said that it was kind of getting unhealthy and she was kind of using me and that I was you know, doing all this stuff for her, spending my money on her, and spending all my time over there, but it didn't seem like she was doing that much for me in return, and that maybe we needed some space. Well, I didn't really have any reason to say all this, which, it, you don't need a reason to say, hey, I need space, but at the time, I was kind of a doormat, 
and I still kind of am. So I didn't feel like it was right to just give up on a friendship or back away from a friendship for no reason in my mind, you know, in for very little reason anyway. Um, that is until one day her boyfriend, who was also living with her and who I also was like cleaning up after, he was cool. Um, but they would get into fights a lot in front of me and I would be almost the mediator and it seemed kind of really toxic. Uh, she would throw things and she would hit him and I didn't think that was okay at all. So at that point I I stopped hanging out a little bit. I'd back off and, and only go over there during the daylight hours, not spend the night anymore. And if they started fighting, I'd try to find my way out of the situation Really, I think I could have done more to stand up for him, because I should have been more aware of how abusive that situation really was. That, you know, if you're going to hit your partner under any circumstance, you, you don't need to be in that relationship, or at least you need some counseling and some help. Um, but I was young and dumb at the time, and I had never heard of a an abusive relationship where the girl was abusing the boy before, so that was new to me, and I wasn't sure what I was looking at. Um, I just knew that it felt wrong, and I didn't like it, and it was really uncomfortable. She also did things like uh, take his phone away, and since she was paying for everything, she just cut him off, and they had to share a phone, and he wasn't allowed to have internet access without her permission, which is so controlling and um, gross. I mean, if you don't have enough trust in your partner that you can't allow them to access the internet without you viewing what they're doing, that's... you need help. Um, no matter what they've done to deserve that, I guess he had talked to other girls behind her back in the past, or something to that equivalent, where she felt like he was no longer to be trusted with the internet at all, and if that's the case, you don't need to be dating him, or he needs to be seeking some help professionally, not not from you, because you're not his mother and he's an adult. Um, anyway, so, sorry about that side tangent. This is just kind of the personality issues that were happening at the time. Um, so obviously I was getting more and more uncomfortable, and um, one day I get a text from her boyfriend, which I was like, wow. I thought you weren't supposed to have a phone. <laughs> well, he had stolen her phone, or stolen, you know, they shared a phone, she just never let him use it. Um, well, he had gotten access to her phone and saw that she was texting a bunch of other guys, and she was being provocative, essentially cheating on him. Uh, and not only that, but this part includes me. She was taking pictures of my sketchbook that I had left over there and claiming that these were her drawings and her artwork and she was sending these photos of her artwork to all these other guys. So she was not only cheating on her boyfriend, but she was using my art as a means to impress them. Which, I mean, first of all, I'm not that good at art, so <laughs> I don't know how many guys she was impressing there. Um, and secondly, that's just really crappy on on all fronts. Um, so when he told me this, I, I believed him because of the situation that he was in. I felt like he was more of a victim and she was more of a villain. Um, I didn't know how to feel, though, because I didn't have solid proof. Um, so I asked him to like send me some pictures. So sure enough, he sent me some of the pictures off of her phone that she had taken. Of course, I had left my sketchbook over there, so I wanted it back, but I didn't know how to confront her because I'm a very non-confrontational person. So I just left it at that. Um, I left it alone until she called me. Uh, within a couple weeks, wondering where I had been, because I just completely ignored her, because I, I didn't know how to say, hey, I don't like you anymore, I think you're rude, and I found out what you've been doing, and 
yada yada. Uh, oh, also in that conversation, I told her boyfriend that if he needed a place to stay, he could stay with me and my boyfriend at the time because he was kind of locked into that situation, living with her, didn't have a job, wasn't allowed to have one. Um, it was crazy. And not allowed to have internet access or any means to, you know, apply for a job or go to school or do something more with his life other than be her boyfriend. So, I get this phone call from her and she's like, hey, do you want to take a road trip with me to Dallas? Which Dallas is, was about three hours away from where I used to live. So, it would be a weekend trip. And I said no. And she said, oh, really? Are you busy or something? And I said, no, I just don't feel comfortable going with you. I don't think we can really be friends right now. Um, your boyfriend told me about all this stuff that you did and that you were posting my artwork as yours to all of these boys. So I don't really trust you and I don't think that's really... I, that's, I don't want to be around that kind of person. Um... And she blew up on me and said that he was lying and he was making it all up and not to believe him. And I was a bad friend for believing him over her and not even asking her about it. Which, granted, I probably should have said something to her sooner and not just ignored the situation. But I told her that I would like to get my sketchbook back and that I don't really believe her. Um... So, she wouldn't give me my sketchbook back because she was really pissed off. So, I just posted on my Facebook some one status that said something along the lines of, Art theft. Cool. Like, that was it. Didn't say anything about her. Didn't say anything about whose art was being stolen. You can assume it was mine because I'm the one that posted the status. But I could very easily be talking about another artist I admire or one of my friends whose artwork was being stolen, as that is something that happens kind of often on the internet. Um, well, she immediately took that as me talking about her, which makes sense because I was, and texted me and called me, blew up my phone, and I didn't know what to do, so I ignored it. And then I read her texts, and they were like, if you don't answer the phone, I'm calling the police on you because you're posting slander online, da 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 da. So I eventually answered her phone call and I was like, what are you talking about? That's not slander. You don't have any proof that I was talking about you. And why would the police care? Like, yes, okay, go ahead. Call the police on me because I made a status that said, art theft, cool. I'm sure they have nothing better to do with their day than to come knock on some 18-year-old girl's door for a very vague, passive-aggressive Facebook post. Yes, that's a great idea. You should do that. Um, and eventually, sh I never went to her house to get my stuff or anything because she, if she's the type of person that will throw things and hit people that she cares about, I felt like I could possibly be in danger with the level of anger she was showing me and the fact that she blew my phone up for hours over one Facebook status and just the fact that I wouldn't be her friend anymore. So she does not handle rejection very well, or at least at this point in time. I don't know anything about her now. Um, since then... I've blocked her on Facebook and haven't made any attempts to contact her and have no interest in that. But yeah, that was really my only story of um, art theft that I know of. I don't think my art's ever been stolen other than that. I'm also not that good. Not good enough for people to say, oh, I did that. So, you know, I guess that's a blessing in disguise. Um. But it does kind of suck because I will never get that particular sketchbook back, which is at least three months of work. And I will never get that journal from Uganda back, which has priceless memories. And I don't know when the next time I'll get to go to Uganda is, or I'll never get to go back and see those specific kids again. They've probably grown up by now and 
moved away or moved on in life and are probably not at that same orphanage. And even if I do get to go back in a similar fashion, it won't be the same. It won't be my first time there. It won't be my first raw experiences and my letters to God and all of this stuff. So I hope that she still enjoys it, I guess. That maybe she can still read it and get a kick out of it or look through my sketchbook and think about that one time she had a friend who was really nice to her and she totally screwed it over. And that she never does that to anybody else in the future. And that she never has since. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the story. I can kind of look back and laugh about it now. But at the time, I was pretty upset about it. Because, um, yeah, I spent a long time on both of those books. And I have my whole collection of sketchbooks missing really only that one since I was a freshman in high school. And I'm 25 now, so I have over 20 books, like, more than one sketchbook per year, so years of experiences, and it kind of sucks to know that one of them is missing because I made a poor choice in a friendship, but I guess lesson learned, uh, stand up for yourself, and when you see something, say something, if you see something that's going on around you that's wrong, um, do something about it, and you know, like, I maybe could have gotten my sketchbook back if I would have talked to her beforehand and not let it just be a phone call conversation. If I had gone to her in person and said, hey, this is what I was told, um, and honestly, I believe it, and I, you know, you, you may have the ability to redeem yourself, but I'd like to end on good terms. For now, we can't be friends. Uh, if you don't mind, I'll just take my things and go. And uh, that's all that I am owed. So have a nice day. You know, maybe in that kind of situation, if I wouldn't have been a little chicken, then I could have maybe got my stuff back. But, oh well. I honestly don't remember what was in the sketchbook. What I'm really more concerned about is the Uganda Journal, man. <laughs> oh well, whatever. I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you for listening, and I hope this audio sounds good. Bye-bye!